Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. For today's midweek meta deck, we are somewhat unsurprisingly playing the bogeyman in the format right now, which is the blue black rescaminator deck. This is a deck that John1111 took to winning the Legacy Showcase Challenge this weekend, just gone. So, one of the sort of higher profile Legacy tournaments on Magic Online. So, let's just get into what this deck does. So, we're a blue deck, so we've got our Days and Force of Wills, and we've got our Brainstorms and Ponders. That much is a given. We're a scam deck, so we've got the scam package, which is Griefs, which puts itself in the graveyard for you nicely, and Trolls, which again put itself in the graveyard nicely for you. And then we've got the reanimates and animates deads to then bring these creatures back and win the game with them and disrupt our opponent with the grief. And we also have the Bowmasters as a three of, which is another sort of standard piece of scam. It's just a really good, efficient card that does a lot in the format. Then we have the re scaminator so like the reanimate part of this. So we've got four in tombs and we've got a couple of scary creatures. So we've got an Attraxa, which we can use to refuel our hand. And we've got an Arcan of Cruelty, which can control the board a lot and give us a nice card advantage too. So we've got two big creatures, and they both pitch to grief, so they're rarely going to be stranded in our hand. So we can entomb these and reanimate those if we don't have our pieces, or we, we have our pieces, but we just want something better. And that basically takes up almost all the deck. Aside from that, we've got room for a single brazen borrower to answer some problem permanence, and a whale of the forgotten, which is a descend eight. So if there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard, as you cast the spell, you can choose as many of these modes as you want. And the modes are return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, target opponent discards a card, and look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them in your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. So this can mill over some stuff to help get you some things to reanimate, as well as being able to like bounce a problem permanent. And, you know, sometimes making your opponent discard a card will be useful. It's rarely going to be the mode that we reach for, but when we get to do all three, then sure, we'll take the extra value. Our mana base... We've got four underground seas and one of the surveil land here. So these are our things we're fetching for. We've got a selection of fetch lands, a couple of basics, and three wastelands. Some of these lists have run four wastelands, but now three seems to be like the number that people have settled on. And yeah, that's what we're running with. As for our sideboard, we're not going for a full transformation. There are some people who are playing a white splash for Triumph of St. Catherine and Source of Plowshares. We're not doing that, but we do have some other things we can bring in. So another Orcish Bowmasters three Dathy Voidwalkers, a couple of Merktide Regents. Although, what I will say about Merktide Regent is, this is a graveyard-dependent card, and we are a graveyard deck, so I'm not sure how useful it is to board into this. Now, obviously, uh, you know, it's still a great card, and different sorts of graveyard hate. You know, if somebody's trying to remove certain pieces with surgicals and stuff, then Merktide is obviously going to be good. And John1111, who uh, won the Legacy Showcase Challenge, clearly demonstrated that it was the right choice for them, and hopefully we can show that in the games. So from that, what have we got? We've got some counter spells in Force of Negation and a Hydro Blast. We've got a little bit of removal and dismember. Some graveyard hate of our own via the unlicensed test to go alongside a Dathy Voidwalker. We've got a Null Rod, another Brazen Borrow, and a couple of Dress Down. So we've got a selection of different tools. They're all the sorts of things you expect to see out of a lot of decks in Legacy, really, that have access to these colours. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it for the deck. So I have played... Similar versions of this deck on the channel, uh, when it first sort of started emerging and people were still getting the numbers together, and I've played some of the more fine-tuned builds, and now we've got uh, this, which has just become a staple of the format, really, and a lot of people consider this to be the best deck in Legacy, and I think that's probably fair at this point, so let's see how well we can do with it. Remember to like and subscribe, and let's get re -scaminatoring. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use, and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? Welcome to round one. Uh, our hand is fine. It's pretty cantrip heavy, but we can sort of turn these cards into other things using Brainstorm. I think this is acceptable. So we can lead off with Island Ponder, the classic start, if you will. Now, there is an option here to just go and get an Underground C, since we can just fetch Underground C off of both of these. Because if we're playing Iron off of this, this can't get Swamp. So if that happens, we don't get to fetch both basics. So we can just essentially be wasted off of a colour if we fetch a basic Iron here. Now, we might find another land here, which is a very real possibility. So we have to make that decision. I think we're going to go for the Underground Sea purely because this is a Scalding Tarn. We'd rather not be wasted off of a colour completely. Because we can operate on low land counts. 
Right, so pondering here, we're looking for, uh, yeah, these sorts of things are exactly the sort of thing we're looking for. I don't believe we're going to want the force of will this turn. So I think we put the force of will down and then we put the reanimate and then the bowmasters. Draw this. So next turn we can grief reanimate grief if that's where we want to be here. We could have fired off the grief now, but if it's some sort of mirror and our opponent has access to reanimates of their own, that can backfire for us. Whereas we can do it all in one turn and then we don't expose ourselves to our opponent having a good hand or drawing a certain thing. And we do have the days to get us through this turn if our opponent is some sort of uh, combo deck. Although Mox Diamond now makes me think our opponent is unlikely to be some sort of combo deck. There is an Ancient Tomb. I'm expecting something more towards the lands ballpark, especially the Ancient Tomb. That tends to suggest a deck with spheres in it. So do I care about this? We can make our opponent pay one mana. That's not very helpful. I guess we just allow this to happen. All right. So now we have this reanimate. There is a force of will on top. I don't particularly want to draw that. So we're going to go and fetch another non-basic, which can be awkward in the face of what is going to be a wasteland heavy strategy here. So I think we are going to try this grief out now. So we were slightly punished for not just playing the grief out because we could have snagged this sphere here. Let's see what our opponent comes up with on their side of the board here. A pithy needle and a crop rotation. Uh, the crop rotation is the one that can give us the most problems here. All right, so we don't get to cast any more spells unless we're casting this days for its alternative cost. We could have got the surveil land and maybe we've given our opponent information that we have a spell because we didn't get the surveil land there. But I think holding up a days could potentially be useful if our opponent has got some like larger plays they want to make. It's unlikely. But if we can find a spot where Days does something now. Alright. Our opponent is on drawing cards with Horizon Canopy, which is pretty good for us. I'm not really sure how much of a keep our opponent's ham. I guess they were trying to crop rotate into a an Urza Saga. That's fine. Right, so this Pith and Needle is going to name Wasteland. Do I care about this? Is the first question. This is another artifact for the purposes of Urza Saga down the road. Is this Days ever going to get any better? Bouncing a land doesn't really impact what we're doing now. I think I will try and get a little bit of value off this days while we can. Because we're not going to be able to brainstorm very easily under the, the sphere to try and get some new cards anyway. And if we find a wasteland, we might be able to cut our opponent off quite nicely soon. Because they are struggling for resources over there. Alright, so we have another grief that we're not doing anything with here. We're just going to reanimate this one in our graveyard. Start the clock going. Another Mox Diamond and a Caracas. So that kind of shuts off the reanimate line for us for like some of our big, well, specifically just for Atraxa. So it means Arcan of Cruelty is better, but I think you normally get Arcan of Cruelty against lands anyway, purely because of Caracas. But they have it in play, it's face up. Do they find a spell? A Soul Guide Lantern. A little bit late on that one. If they want to draw a card with this, it will cost them two life. They might wait until their next turn to draw a card. Sure. I don't think they want to be funneling life into stuff when they didn't have to. All right, so we've got another land here. I think we'll play this and cast a Brainstorm because I'd rather keep up blue light. I guess it doesn't really matter actually because of the sphere. But, um, okay, so what does our hand really do here? I guess we can put back this Grief and this land. And then we can cycle the troll if we don't have to force of will something like really detrimental. Like a crop rotation is something that I would be willing to force of will here. I don't think we force of will a life from alone. That is possible. Right, so drawing a card here. So, okay. So we can shuffle away that land that's on top of our library if we don't want it. And get ourselves a surveil land I think is probably worth doing here. Let's get... And under city sewers. Back over to us. Opponent's got two cards in hand. Doesn't necessarily mean anything too disastrous right now, but we'll see. Uh, a reanimate. Uh, we will leave this on top of our library. This can give us a much quicker clock and an additional threat, so we can actually just put this game to bed. We can't brainstorm and get it because of the sphere, so we're just going to hit them for three. Hold up bowmasters and force of will, or or force of will. I just, we don't get to do both. Bowmaster is not a particularly exciting threat here. 
Maze of Ith. So this is exactly the reason why I wanted that reanimate. Now our opponent can crop rotate at any time. So if we play this Bowmaster's end of turn, they'll know the coast is clear to deploy a crop rotation if they have one. So does that suggest that we're supposed to wait on the Bowmasters? It doesn't add a lot. It's like two damage to the clock. And how bad could a crop rotation be for us? I think we're fine not deploying the Bowmasters yet. And just making sure that we have this force of will available to us at all times. Just in case the worst happens. Right, so let's get this guy back. Right, so we'll attack with this. They'll use their maze and then we'll pass a turn. Yeah, they are using it. We'll still be attacking every turn. But I'll just, just check one time, make sure our opponent is an F6. So we've got a three turn clock because the Bowmasters can deal the extra ping that we need it to. Now obviously we can deploy that Bowmasters next turn. And hold up the force of will still. So I like our spot. Our opponent hasn't helped themselves out too much with where they've been. The sphere is one thing. Uh, do I counterspell this? If we counterspell this, we're exposed to force of will. So this represents three damage a turn getting through. But if we play the Bowmaster, it's two damage a turn getting through. The next turn. Um, I think we have to just say okay to that one. I definitely wouldn't fault somebody for counterspelling that one. All right. Uh... I'm just trying to work out if I want to cycle this troll first. We don't have another Undercity Sewers. Which maybe want to cycle the troll more. But we could cycle it just to get more lands. So we're more likely to play more spells. Probably worth doing. Just going to get ourselves another Underground Sea. Our opponent's not really about that life. So this makes it easier for us to multi-spell at some point. We didn't attack because our opponent's just going to attack the maze. We may as well not waste our time. So we can drop in the Bowmasters and start clocking for two a turn. So that's a five turn clock with Force of All back up. All right. They're uh, tapping this Ancient Tomb, which cuts their clock in by a turn. Life from the Loam. I don't think this is the one we counter spell, because the things they're getting back aren't particularly exciting. Now, if there's one that's going to get them back, like a Saga or something, we might want to delay their Saga being able to be used for a turn. So that might be worth a Force of Will. There is a Ghost Quarter. We have another basic in our deck, so it's not the end of the world if they start Ghost Quartering us. I don't think we're about that life. All right. Let's deploy our Orcish Bowmasters, which will put our opponent to seven, and then we can crash in for two. If we draw another blue card, we can start doing brainstorm stuff, but we want to hold up our brainstorm as we can. Uh, so if we brainstorm and this hits uh, a reanimate, we can put another troll into play and improve our clock. Um, we have drawn another reanimate. It's good. I don't really want this grief, but we might want this brazen borrower, so I'll put that on top for later. Our opponent can Ghost Quarter this Brazen Borrower away. So maybe we want to keep the Brazen Borrower in our hand instead of the Brainstorm. We can also deploy it as a threat. Seems reasonable to me. Okay, so we're going to attacks. Attack with some guys. We can play, reanimate, hold up Force of Will. We've got the life to spare because they sourced the Plowshares us earlier. Now they can Ghost Quarter to give us a free shuffle. They're less likely to want to do that. All right, our opponent's just had enough. Okay, so the lands matchup. Probably not the best of times for us. A lot of these sort of uh, green-white... Well, the green-white green strategies are pretty good against what we're doing here, generally speaking. So I like the dress downs for their Saga tokens because that's one of the ways that the game can get out of hand for us. I like Dathy Voidwalker to shut down their low engine. I like the Force of Negation for the same reason as also I like the Hearse. I'm not a big fan of Force of Wills here. Now, our opponent is a sphere deck so i think the way we play around that is just make sure we have a little bit more mana to our name it's probably better so we try and work towards keeping hands with more mana in uh, i don't like attracts against their deck but i still like the arc of cruelty that probably means we're trimming some amount of these in tombs the griefs also aren't very exciting but they can do some stuff maybe on the play i'd rather have a force than the grief because this gives us the ability to I guess Days is pretty bad here as well, though, isn't it? All right, so let's have these forces in. And then we get to keep one of these days, uh, one of these Griefs. Do you want Borrower? There's another answer to Merit Lage. I think that's probably a good idea. How many of our Entombers are we cutting? If we cut another one, then we should probably just be cutting the Archon. But the Archon is pretty good against Maze of Ith shenanigans. Bowmasters isn't very good here. Trim one of those. Well, I'd rather have another Grief or a Bowmasters. Bowmasters goes wide which is probably better in the face of Maze of Ith. 
Um, I think we can actually we'll probably just get rid of some of our reanimate stuff if our opponent's going to be messing with our graveyard. We we'll probably just want to say no to that. I don't think we want to bring in a Bowmasters, but maybe we have another Grief instead of an Animate Dead here. Let's try something along these lines. Like you could bring in something like Null Rod to shut off like um, like Shadow Spear and Mox Diamonds and things. I don't think that's the way I want to approach this game. Uh, so we have a turn two Dante Voidwalker. I think that is relatively acceptable here. We've got two lands. We've got a cantrip to try and find another land. And we can play a fetch land so we don't have to worry about a wasteland immediately. Soul Guide Lantern. Understood. So these reanimates looking a little bit rubbish, but that's exactly what Brainstorm is doing in our deck. So we'll play this Mr. Rainforest and we'll pass. So we can brainstorm away these cards when the time is right. And we've got another land, which is excellent. We just want to make a few land drops and then kind of go from there. We could always do like an end of turn, bounce, Soul Guide Lantern, untap, make a big scary guy. All right, so Urza Saga is a pretty good one. A Sphere of Resistance. Okay, I would like to respond to Sphere of Resistance. We will be getting an Underground Sea here because we're trying to cast a Black Black spell soon. So I will cast this Brainstorm now. Uh, so we have a line towards playing the Archon if we want it in a few turns. How many lands are we going to want? Against the Sphere, probably a few. Uh, we're definitely not going to want both of these Reanimates, so we'll send one of them back. And then we can untap and do nothing just yet. Um, we can play out this swamp. Makes it harder for them to get us if they can like deploy multiple lands or something like an exploration and then wasteland us. Would love to get this Daffy Void Walker in though. I imagine their hand is just going to be playing off this saga for a couple of turns. We should have played the Pluted Delta actually because we wanted to shuffle away that other reanimate, didn't we? That was an error from me. I don't believe I am... Trying to find another way of shuffling by like casting our own tomb or anything. We just have to suck up that we made that mistake there and try and rectify it later. Okay, so we can deploy Dathy Void Walker, which will invalidate their Life from the Loam strategy. It will not race this Urza Saga though. But Brazen Borrower can bounce with a construct token. If that's the thing we need it to do. That does mean that our entomb line is shut off. But if we can. End of turn, Brazen Borrower, their Solgar Lantern. We just need four mana to uh, put an Ark of Cruelty into play. And that's probably going to be pretty good here. Like we'll take out one of their guys. It'll force them to plow it, most likely. We'll also be getting an Urza Saga underneath our Dathy Void Walker, if that's a thing that we want to do anything with. Yeah, really annoyed I didn't crack that fetch and get rid of that reanimate. Just giving us another bad draw in our hand. Right, a Wasteland. Okay. There goes a the land. Well, it does put a wasteland underneath our Darth of Woodwalker as well. Creature cards and graveyards. So this is what they fetched off of their um, as a saga. So we're going to take a beat here, and they've got this thing. So again, we're getting very punished for not cracking that fetch. Like, it's only one card in our hand, but that's one card that could be basically anything else. So we get to attack for three here. Uh, as a saga and wasteland don't feel that exciting. We could bounce one of these tokens, waste down their green source, and then where are we going with that? Hmm. Is that the play we really need to be doing here? We don't know how many lands our opponent has in hand, so I'm not really ready to just start waste sanding right away. But I think I'm happy to brazen borrow one of these guys. We're going to have to get brainstorm at some point and put away some amount of our reanimate shenanigans. We can pitch them to grief, but that's not a great strategy. Like, we're going to need to hard cast this, maybe. Right, Ancient Tomb. All right, our opponent's going to come in for four damage this turn. Right, so this one has to get an untapped land because of the sphere. Let's pay theft one of these. Say goodbye to the construct. We take four here. That puts us to nine. So we are quite far behind in the old race here. Our opponent's not really incentivized to use our Ancient Tomb for anything right now, either. Right, they are ploughing our friend. Okay, goodbye, friendo. Uh, so we can cycle this troll of Khazad Doom just to get some more lands going. Because we're going to keep wanting to make land drops here. And then we can redeploy a Dathy Void Walker here. But we are behind on the race. But this does keep them from life from the loaming. And if we can find a way of dealing with this construct token, then we might be all right. If we find another land, we can deploy the Grief. 
which isn't enough to fight the construct token yet. Okay, a dark depths. Um, that's pretty bad news for us because this is a 2020 right now, and they're going to do it now to play around wasteland. Yep. So we need to find our other brazen borrower. That's what you're telling me. So they're going to crash for four here. We don't have anything we can use to affect this Marilage from our opponent's exile zone using our Dathy Voidwalker. So what is the plan here? Draw our other Brazen Borrower. A Ponder. That doesn't do it, because we would need to find two different things. So what we can do is attack for three, chomp block, and hope next turn is, is okay. But then we die to this. I think we're winning this one. And we can use our time more effectively. Okay. So, how do I feel about what our opponent's putting down? Um, honestly, I think our approach here is fine. I think we can just probably just roll back in again. Like, we've trimmed on some of the graveyard hate stuff. We could board in these Merc Tides. Maybe that's going to be better for us than any of this sort of Entomb Archon. Although I do like the fact that Archon gets round some things that our opponent could be putting down. So maybe we can trim these Animate Deads for Merc Tides and try that. Because their Graveyard Hate, like they can wipe everything with a Soul Lantern, but they're going to keep it up to stop our reanimation shenanigans. So I think it's best off that we do that. Like we could play Dazes here, but the last deck can usually play around Daze quite effectively. So I think having Merc Tides here might be useful. Because again, like I said at the top, when your opponent's Graveyard Removal is, you know, pinpoint generally, that, you know, they want to use it to stop us reanimating something or whatever. Puts us in good stead. Uh, this is... Not a good hand. Uh, we need to have another black source for Adathi Voidwalker. So I think I'm going to mulligan this one. Um, Island Ponder is okay. But this doesn't help us cast Adathi Voidwalker. I guess we could grief the Adathi Voidwalker. And then we just need a black source to reanimate it. All right, I think we will grief them now. Just have a little look what they're working with before we decide what we're doing with our Ponder. Okay, so they've got a choke. I don't want them to have a choke, so that can get right out. All right, so now we can... Let me pondering. All right, so we've got some more griefs. I'm not really interested in more griefs. So I think we're going to go any order and shuffle here. Okay, we did find the next land. So we can reanimate something, and that might force a two-for-one using our opponent's uh, endurance, which will take the crop rotation out of the hand as well, which is a hint of Torek that I can get behind. Right, the wind set teeth. I probably did not draw a plane there. Let's cycle this. I think we just get a basic swamp here, given that we already have the basic to play on. Right, let's go for this troll and force out this endurance. Our opponent doesn't have a lot going on right now. Like they, they, they can access the combo, but obviously we've got a force negation here, which can stop this crop rotation, provided they do it on their turn. Right, endurance pitching the crop rotation. This is exactly what we wanted. I will take that two for one, and that also now gives us a creature in their graveyard to reanimate. The endurance is pretty reasonable as a target. So I reanimate fizzles, we don't lose any life, but we've got two cards out of their hand for one mana. I will take that exchange. We might be seeing uh, no surveil land from our opponent in their deck. Interesting. Assessment stage from our opponent. It's over to us. Can we find something? We found a grief. That's something, I guess, but it's going to take a while before it becomes actually useful so we've got choke answered if we're worried about that we've got another crop rotation answered because we griefed before we pondered we didn't know if we were reanimating anything so we couldn't so we could have done like a, a grief take their um endurance but then they would just crop rotation for the bog but again we didn't have that information because we griefed before we pondered all right so now we have hard cast force of negation up so we should be able to dodge some amount of things. Are they copying a basic land? They are. So that means we can't waste land their Thespian stage. Not that we have a waste land right now. Okay, that's pretty bad for us, as you can probably imagine. Um, so they're going to do this now to dodge wasteland. So we have a turn to draw uh, one of our two brazen borrowers. All right. Not exactly how we drew it up there. We were hoping that they wouldn't just draw into it. But it's in their deck for a reason, right? Uh, yep, yeah, we're just dead. I think these lands matchups, like I know green white depths is, you know, and it is pretty good against the old rescaminator, and I think lands are also pretty well positioned against them. 
Like they have main deck graveyard hate, which helps. They've got some pretty powerful haymakers they can bring in. And Marilage, as you've seen if you watch my channel, is just generally quite an effective thing against a lot of these uh, scam style decks because they maybe have two cards in their entire 75 to answer it. Anyway, so we're 0 and 1, but I think we showcased what this deck can do. It was only a 2-1 uh, a loss, so we did manage to get a game on the board. Let's go to round 2. Um, yeah, we can do some Island Pondering to begin with. We've got a Force of Will if something goes wrong. We're just looking for a nice creature to stick in our graveyard or an Entomb. Grief, not such a great draw here. That's not really what we want in our opening hand, or in our hand at any point, really. All right, so we passed the Stifle Test here. This one is the Island, yep. So let's just do a classic Island Ponder. Animate Dead. Days, Troll of Khazadum. Okay, we don't really need this Animate Dead. I like the Troll though, so we'll keep the Troll and then keep the Days so we've got a little bit of insurance against what our opponent's doing. So we can draw the Troll next turn, cycle it at our opponent's end step, and then think about reanimating it. We don't want to put it into our graveyard when our opponent can get sorcery speed priority, just in case they are playing reanimate stuff themselves. Because there's a lot of that about. Which one is this? The Bantland. Okay. Now that might mean our opponent is Bant, or it might mean that they are using this to get some off-colour stuff for the purposes of Leyline Binding. It's likely that our opponent is Bant though. Or maybe five colour with some with sort of like a Bant central theme. It might be splashing into things like Fortheolingus and Orcish Baymasters. Volcanic Island. And up the Beanstalk. Um, I would like to fight over this now. Alright, no beanstalk for our opponent there. So we have a choice about whether we want to work towards our own plan here or try and hem in our opponent's plan by using this wasteland. We can take our opponent off of green. I think that's probably worth doing here. That's like the, the beanstalk mana, which is one of the scarier cards. We do have Force of Will pitching a Traxxer at some point. Alright, found green mana. If we can find a brainstorm, we can put this on top. And then put it away. This does mean we're drawing the animate dead though by doing that play. So it wasn't a free play. Um, we could ponder here, or I think we're just gonna cycle this troll and then bring it back next turn. At present, our opponent doesn't have white mana, so our creature is more likely to live. Okay, there's the white mana. A to fairy. Like, if we don't count on this, we're not countering anything, and this can certainly bounce some of the stuff we're up to. So let's say no to this one. Is this where our opponent fights? Like, if we don't fight this, we don't fight ever again, so. Some decks can ignore Teferi a bit, but the situation we're here with doesn't really fill up and we can fight the Teferi. All right, our opponent does have a Force of Will for this. They didn't use it for Beanstalk, so they had it, so. All right, so they're going to plus their Teferi. This does mean that our cycling stuff here does not look great. So we can get this under City Sewers. We can deploy this and get a little bit of extra value if that's what we're about this turn. So I think we cast the Ponder here. Um, we have a Brainstorm, which we can use to fix our hand up a bunch. We have a Grief, which doesn't feel amazing here. But we could just Grief over and over again. I don't hate that as a strategy. Um, we could put the Reanimate into our hand, surveil the Grief, and then have it next turn. Or we could just put this Brainstorm on top. Put this reanimate on top and have this grief. And then we could try and grief our opponent right now with one of these animate deads. Like, we do know that this guy is getting bounced, but this at least gives us value on the way in and out. Our right, opponent's got two cards in hand. What do they got? A leyline binding and a solitude. I will take the leyline binding here. Solitude will cost them two cards if they want to fire it off. We didn't want to do the Undercity Sewers because we actually want to draw the Reanimate because we're going to have to work through this Teferi rather than uh, around it. Alright, so they're just plusing the Teferi. They've got a land, so we have perfect information on our opponent's hand. So we know there's a Brainstorm on top. I don't really want to... So we're going to use this now to take our opponent's Solitude. And I don't want to get rid of this Brainstorm, so I'm just going to play this Fetch Land. And then once we've exhausted our opponent's resources, like if they bounce this, this Grief, they will have a second bounce saved up in their Teferi though, which is kind of annoying. But we can we can brainstorm and see how things go. They're just plusing the Teferi. That's very interesting. 
What is their game over there? Alright. Let's just attack this to Ferry, I think. Try and strip it away. Okay, they drew a ley line binding. Um, that's definitely annoying. I think we just let that one hit this time. Unfortunately. Well, we can't do anything because I got to Ferry anyway. Uh, Alright, let's brainstorm and see what we can shake loose here. Um, we've got Entomb Reanimate. Uh, we've already pitched our Atraxa, so we can't just reload. We can get a little bit of value with an Archon. That's not the best, is it? Uh, I don't think we need this Underground Sea. And we can just fetch for this Sewers anyway if we want it. Um, I'd rather have a... I don't have a troll in hand or just this under under city sewers. We'll put these two back. We'll crack this now. And we'll play this sewers and have a look at the top card of our library, see if it changes anything. A days. Uh, the time for days is not now. If we want to entomb, we have to do it now. We can't do it in our opponent's turn. Do we want to wait um Archon is sacrifice a creature or a planeswalker, I think, right? Let me just check. Yes, it's sacrifice a creature or a planeswalker, because this play is very good. So our opponent has drawn zero cards to Ferry. Alright, so you can sacrifice a creature or a planeswalker. Goodbye to your planeswalker. And we can even get our grief back in their draw step next turn. That will give them access to Slayland Binding, so that's probably not what we want to do. But it's a thing we have available to us. I think the play here is send with our enormous creature. Okay. Got one card in hand. Is it going in the bin? It is. It was a force of will. All right. So in comes our massive yacht. Uh, we can brainstorm here because we've got fetch hand as well. If we find something that we think can secure this game for us, uh, I do like the wasteland. And we're going to put these two on top. I think. And we're going to drop this wasteland so we can strip our opponent of white mana since that's their removal color. All right. Our opponent has unsurprisingly had enough of that. So, this matchup, interesting. I think we want the Orcish Bowmaster. Our opponent's going to have a lot of removal in their deck, right? That's kind of what their deck does. So in order to combat that, we probably want more threats. Like, we are the aggro here. We are certainly not the control. So, we could just board in a whole bunch of threats and maybe a little bit of protection do we want to be doing the whole reanimate thing? Like, it can snatch away their planeswalkers and draw us a bunch of cards we can stop our opponents. So I think that is kind of interesting. I don't think one of the days is on the play. I don't mind them on the draw, though. Where of the Forgotten is fine. Um, we're more about trying to do the scam thing. But having the reanimate plan is nice, though. Um, we kind of want our opponent to fight over some stuff so we can be left with a Bowmaster. So that's kind of the jam in this matchup. So I think we do still want these two threats. Right, uh, Cummins' play effects are pretty strong, but I think we want to trim on some of the graveyard stuff a little bit. Uh, do you want to trim on one more of these animate deads? Or do you want to trim on a troll? Troll is, again, just a threat that kind of is self-working. Maybe we don't need the Wed of the Forgotten and we're just going to have this Brazen Borrower instead because at least that is a threat on its own. Yeah, I can go with that. Right, we have Orcish Bowmasters, which is one of our better cards. We'll keep this one. Our opponent is kind of incentivized to keep ways of dealing with our nonsense creatures, like from the graveyard. So they probably have some amount of removal spells in hand. Like, I don't think they can keep a hand that doesn't have a removal spell in. Unless it's just like a load of counter spells and beams and stuff. But they're going to have to have something reactive here. I'd rather not have the Bowmasters be the first thing that leaves our hand. I'd rather try and bait out a force of something else and be left with the Bowmasters because it's such a powerful card in the matchup, but it is what it is. We can play on our opponent's turn. That gives us access to Force of Negation instead of Force of Will, which means we can potentially pitch this Merktide region and hold up a Force of Will for later. And the Force of Negation means if they have a removal spell or something, we can stop that from being a thing they get to recur with a Mystic Sanctuary down the line, if that's what the deck contains. Alright, so we're going to crack this and get our Surveil Land. Uh, a Troll of Kazadun. I don't really want this. So we're going to put this into our graveyard. And I guess this is a reasonable thing to try and reanimate. Like, it clocks quickly. 
it requires an answer from our opponent and it can pave the way for our Orcish Bowmasters down the line. Let's try this. Chances of this getting a two for one are... Okay. So there's no force of will here. There's no solitude either. All right. So we've got ourselves a 5-5 five five basically unblockable. There's a Misty Rainforest from our opponent. What delight do they have in store? A Tundra. It feels like a Teferi. Teferi and Bounce. It is a Teferi and Bounce. Okay. I think we're going to pick a fight here. I think we're probably using this Force of Negation here. Right, they're going to force back. Yep, this is the fight we were looking for. They get a Teferi. They bounce this. We Bowmasters kill their Teferi. All right. A Wasteland. Do not hate that one. Right, so let's play these little Bow Boys. Let's finish off this Teferi. Does our opponent have another Force of Will? They do. They've got two cards in hand. So we can take them off of green mana here. We can take them off of black and red mana, which I don't think is that important to them. I think taking them off of green mana is the best we can manage here. Shuts down their draw engines. Okay. So now what? We've got a Murktide Regent for next turn. It's not going to be that large. It's only going to be a 4-4. But we can play it. And tomb that could be a light useful down the line. I'm right, just going to crack this one now, just so that we can exile better stuff. Our opponent doesn't tend not to run soft permission, so we're going to get rid of things that aren't creatures here, so we can at least reanimate this. All right, so our opponent can't bounce this with Teferi. They're going to need an actual removal spell, and there one is. All right, I think our opponent is probably going to be able to get the better of us with this one, but we get to play days on the play in the next game, if we lose this one. So now any creature we put in is just going to die unless we can reanimate one of our large friends. I think we do cycle one of these, but we don't cycle the other because we might be hard casting it very soon. Just get underground C, play an underground C, and pass. So we have five mana next turn. So we're one land away from Troll of Khazadun. If we don't draw land, then we draw a spell, which will hopefully be useful. Right, so here's a Mystic Sanctuary from our opponent picking up a Ponder. Okay. A Grief. I like the Grief. I think we are playing our land out for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Let's slam a friend. Let's see what they're working with over there. An other Beanstalk and a Force of Will. We know they've got a Ponder in hand. I think I'd rather cut them out from cards. They don't have a green source, but they can Ponder into one next turn, which is almost certainly what they were planning on doing. We don't cycle this trial because if we draw a land, we just get to cast it. We've already got bin creatures in the bin. We don't need to put any more in. If we draw a runner, runner reanimation spell, we can always cycle the troll and we draw the second reanimation spell. Although, if we do that, we're probably entombing something a bit scarier. So if our opponent doesn't find a blue card, their force of wills off. If they bounce our grief, they might be forced to force our grief. Otherwise, we just get to take it anyway. So it's not a great spot for our opponent. They're looking for white removal and mana sources that can hopefully cast them beans. Just plus in the Teferi. Interesting. That suggests to me that our opponent has a removal spell. A Brainstorm. I don't hate that one. Right, we'll attack Teferi. Our creature will die to some sort of removal. No. Does our opponent have Bowmasters in their deck? They haven't shown us Bowmasters yet. We've seen a reasonable amount of their deck. Alright, we're going to go for this and see if it... I think the Xander's Lounge is just for the purposes of Leyline Binding. All right, so we have a Wasteland. We have a Troll. We, I guess we can cycle a Troll and then have a Troll. But then a land does the same thing. So I guess we can put back Troll and land. And then deploy this. And then we'll use this in Tomb to Shuffle. Oh, we could have just kept Runner Runner. Do you want a Tractor or do you want Ark of Cruelty? That's an interesting choice. I like... The idea of being able to get rid of the Teferi, but I think a Traxxer is probably going to be better most of the time. Just drawing a whole bunch of cards. Yes, yeah, so we could have just left like Runner Runner. Um, I don't know, Binding. Yeah, sure. So, so like I said, we could have left like Runner Runner Troll for our next couple of turns. Maybe that would be slightly better than trying to leverage that Brainstorm right there. And into, um, you know, sorry, leverage the, the Shuffle off the Brainstorm. All right, so we've got the mana to play the Troll. We also have a reanimate. We know our opponent has got a force of will there. Do they have a blue card? I 
think we can just use the reanimate as a prize if this doesn't work. Because this is good enough to require an answer from our opponent. Now they can bounce this with their Teferi, but we can just keep replaying it. And then when we get a nice little window, we can try and snap off this reanimate an opportune time. Because we have the Wasteland, we can always stop them from having Hardcast Force of Will next turn. Because we can just take out one of their sources, so they'll need two cards to do it. But we've got a bunch of Greaves in the deck, we can draw those and try and disrupt the Force of Will that way, and just secure our reanimate. And hopefully Attractor will draw us three or so cards, as well as being a big body that requires an answer. That'd be quite nice. Force of Will pitching Lorien revealed. Alright, so that was basically one of the exchanges that I wanted to happen, more or less. They can bounce our Attractor with a Teferi, but I think getting the extra cards here is going to be worth it. Alright, they're just plusing the Teferi. We've got one card in hand, so it can't be a high-cast Force of Will. It could be a Force of Negation, but let's go for an Attractor here. It's a Force of Negation, sure. Let's do it again. Would prefer an Arcan of Cruelty in this situation, to be honest, but... Maybe we'll still get there with this Arkhan. Alright, so we get a land, a creature. Uh, what do we want with our spells here? So, we have choices for our creatures here. We could just play a Grief right now and just have more damage on board. So land-wise, we're taking the, the Wasteland. Sorcery, it's going to be this Ponder. Instant, it's going to be this Brainstorm. And then Creature is the hard one. Do we want this Orcish Bowmasters to try and stop our opponent from ever getting anywhere? I think that's pretty reasonable. I think Death of Warwalk is also reasonable. I think I want the Bowmasters here. Like our opponent's going to have to cantrip to get anywhere here. So we can play this land. We can take out both of our opponent's white mana sources. Cast this Orcish Bowmasters. I'll ping this so if this draws a card it dies. And then I'll try and turn this Ponder into something else. That's a pretty good Attractor. Uh, Entomb, Brainstorm, I don't really want any of these. Like, they're fine, but it's not what I'm about. Yep, that's fine, just another threat. Alright, we're quite far ahead now. We've managed to work through our opponent's things. And we've put them in a pretty horrible spot. So, you can bounce your Attractor. You draw a card, we get the Bowmaster ping you. Okay, our opponent has had enough of that. So, yeah, we just kind of smushed our opponent there we just had non-stop threats and because we stopped our opponent's card of the engine they never really got anywhere i think they could have been a little more aggressive with their own teferi just trying to get some cards off it like in the first game they never got cards off of the teferi they cast it went all the way up to seven and did nothing uh now i understand why they wanted to have like some bounces saved up but if they're not going anywhere with their hand they need to kind of make some things happen but uh yeah that matchup felt real good okay let's go to round three uh, yeah, we've got one of those hands that kind of does the silly thing that our deck's kind of designed to do with the old full-on scam. So let's see how that goes. We're probably going to pitch this Attraxer because we don't really want to... Yeah, we don't really want that Attraxer to be in our hand. Alright, so we'll play this Underground Sea out. Grief pitching Attraxer. Now, taking four life against Delver is not free, that's for sure. So we've got here, Counterbalance, Force of Will, Merchant Region. Okay, so we take the Force of Will, and then we reanimate the Grief. And then we probably take the Counterbalance here. And we're kind of doing the thing now. We can bring back a Troll and just try and clock our opponent that way. But again, it's not free to take all this life against Delver. They're a tricksy deck, which can do a lot of work. One, two, three, four. They're pretty close to the Merchant already. They didn't flip their Delver though, so that's very nice for us. Um, I think we are playing this Undercity Sewers in case we spike a big monster. Or another Grief. Uh, let's attack with our Grief. So we have a choice here. We can either deploy this Grief, or we can ponder aiming to do the troll next turn instead. How much am I worried about this Merktide Regent? If we drop our life turtle, this will go to be a 4-4. And we'll be on 12. That's a three turn clock. We've kind of got a similar paced clock. But they can possibly drop this Merktide next turn anyway. I think we're supposed to ponder here. An Orcish Bowmasters. That's the sort of thing I'm after here. So I'll bury the Brainstorm. Put the land and then the Bowmasters. 
So next turn, if their Delver doesn't flip, it didn't flip last turn. So we know they've got a thing that isn't an uh, instant or sorcery in hand. A lightning bolt, that's a very good one. Okay. So they're going to clean up our grief here, bash us for three. And then they've got Merc Tide as a follow up, which is pretty scary, in all honesty. Right, Island, that's probably the card they drew the previous turn off of the Delver. So now, they, now they're going to drop the Merc Tide as well. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get stomped here. Like we had the nice start, but Merktide Regent is a hell of a Magic the Gathering card. So we don't really have ways of answering this. So we're going to need to find... Yeah, we're going to need to find like one of our big... Like our Arcan of Cruelty off of an Entomb here. So I guess we start with a Brainstorm. Our opponent has shown us Tropical Island. Though. They're probably the blue-red Delver that just plays Questing Druid. Animate Dead is not it. Um... I think we're putting these two back for now. Or is it the troll? Maybe it's the troll. That is another shuffle. But I don't know how much time we have to try and shuffle things here. Five, six, seven, eight. Maybe we're supposed to keep that animate dead, actually. Yeah, I don't think I've played this one great, but we haven't got anything going on here. Yikes. Um, I guess we put this back now. And we put back the... The Bowmasters are going to get us out of here. And we just cycle this now. Let's get another one around C. And then our opponent hits us. And we need to basically put the Arcan of Cruelty into play next turn. We've got four in Tombs to find. So if we'd have had that troll, we could have been hitting our opponent. But then we'd be kind of getting smashed up ourselves a little bit. Because of these and our life total. Okay, Brainstorm. Nope, that's us cooked, I think. Yeah, Delver's a good deck. Okay, so the Delver matchup. So, Unlicensed Terrace is good against, like, the fair graveyard decks. So, I don't hate this. Orcish Bowmasters is always a good little friend to have. Uh, Dathy Voidwalker shuts off their graveyard quite nicely as well. Brazen Borrow is an interesting one for bouncing Merc Tides and kind of getting rid of what's going on. But I think we already have that more or less covered here. So, what sort of things are we looking to cut here? I don't particularly like Force of Wills in this matchup. So, our opponent's going to have a bunch of Pyroblasts. But Merktide is such a beating for us, though. So, we probably need to keep some number of them in. Unless we're just hoping that these Graveyard Hate pieces can, can get there. So, I think we want to keep Dazes because we're on the play. Our opponent's going to have some amount of way of messing with our Graveyard. So, we're going to take away some of our Graveyard pieces. And try something along these lines, I think. Now, we could bring in the Dismember, but the life is not free against Delver. But taking four is probably better than taking loads. But if they have a counter spell with Dismember, it feels so bad. All right, we're going to give this a go. Um, it's an odd one, isn't it? Like We need this troll to get our land. What are we pitching to grief then? The Archon, and then we can Entomb and Traxa. That's fine. Traxo is a large customer. So we probably want to cycle this on our on our turn just to dodge things like Stifle. It means we don't have days available for turn one, but we still get to grief our opponent on turn one. So I think it's the Arcan Cruelty that goes. Now we do have a Brainstorm, so we could have shuffled that back in. But what do we see here? Dragon's Race Channeler, Dragon's Race Channeler, Ponder, Pyroblast. Well, well, well. Ain't that some stuff like we can take the force and then we know our black spells resolve that's probably where we need to be here there's no stifle over there but i'm still going to cycle this now because they could draw one and we're going to get an underground c and pass so they're just going to play out dragon's race channel this turn which then gives us a turn to brainstorm while our opponent can't pyroblast this is not a matchup where we're going to be wasting on that oh wow that's an even better draw than the brainstorm actually all right let's Fire this little friend in. Goodbye, Dragon's Race Channel. This does give them creature for their channeler, and they've already got land and sorcery, so they can make a 3 3 channeler this turn. Which is not nothing, that's for sure. But if they do that, then our brainstorm is active again. Yep. I'd be surprised if they didn't ponder here, though. Yeah. I think being proactive is where you generally want to be. They put counterbalance into the graveyard. Okay, so they're going to have five different types of delirium. We get a ping. 
But again, that ping is nothing compared to the fact they've got a bigger clock here. I guess we do attack for three ourselves, but we can't attack this turn because of their 3-3 three, three blocker. All right, Undercity Sewers. That's not really where I want to be, is it? Um, if we cast a Brainstorm, we might find an untapped land here. All right, so we're casting a Brainstorm first. We have Reanimate and Entomb, but we don't get to do both of those right now. Um, so what do we want here? I think we just put these two lands back in the deck. I don't believe this days is going to do much for us um, so if we sacrifice this we can go and get ourselves the undercity sewers here okay we could have done this with different timing uh, brainstorm um, yeah that's pretty good if things start going wrong for us are we waste our opponent here to stop Merktai regent that is something i could be worried about this can also be our mana to pay around a daze that our opponent may have. I think making sure that we get our Entomb reanimate through is going to be more important than stopping a Merktide. Because if we get an Attractor in play, it does die to Pyroblast. Which is not where I want to be, but it is the nature of things. There is a Delver of Secrets. Okay, so we can go Entomb. Reanimate with Days back up. Probably got three mystery cards in hand though. Okay, get in there, Attraxa. Uh, get on the battlefield, Attraxa. So our, if our opponent is smart, they won't Pyroblast an R turn. They might try and Pyroblast on the stack. A Force of Will. Oh, that's so savage. Yikes. Um, so we can't Daze this because they can pay. Yeah, that's pretty sketchy. Now our opponent didn't hit a land this turn. So I think it's right to try and keep them off Merc Tide to buy us a bit more time. But we tried to play around the days there, but it didn't really come to fruition for us. Let's go to attacks. And we can send in our 2-2. This means that their 1-1 one, one can attack more freely. Because we're unlikely to trade it for our Bowmasters. But yeah, it's an awkward one. They did pitch a Merc Tide to that Force of Will. Alright, so we're going to get Crash for 4. They're coming in for the full 4. I'm not going to trade off my Bowmasters. All right, we have a Brainstorm available. I would like to cast a Brainstorm. This is pretty Pyroblastable for our opponent. Yep, here he is. Yep, not surprised. All right, I'm going to cycle this and keep making land drops. We want to be able to have a chance to cast a Grief at some stage. All right, our opponent's got one card in hand. we got one card in hand. they got four power in play. We've got three. They might be about to have six power in play. They did not. Graft Digger's Cage. Okay, well, all of our best reanimate lines are kind of gone already because both our giant monsters are no longer with us. Well, we, we could have reanimated a Traxor, I suppose. But uh, there's no arc of cruelty there. Okay. Uh, swamp, this allows us to play a Grief next turn. I think we are still bashing here. So we're keeping it in hand in case we have a Brainstorm that we want to pop off. Right, they missed on Delva again. Another dragon, uh, sorry, another cage triggering their Dragon's Race Chandler. Sure, our opponent's not interested in Wastelands here. They just want burn spells to finish this game off. We could have prevented a lot of damage to our own life total by holding back our Orcish Bowmasters, which is something we're probably going to have to do now. Animate dead. This does not work. Creature cards in graveyards and libraries cannot enter the battlefield. So this animate dead won't do anything. So I guess we are attacking for one here and hoping they don't flip Delver. No flip on the Delver. Okay, so we're not dead necessarily this turn. But we will be dead next turn if we don't come up with like a Brazen Borrower or something. We can't reanimate a giant monster. Another Delver of Secrets. Okay. Well, we're definitely looking pretty dead over here. And that's a scoring turn. That's the end of that game. Wowzers. And the match. Yeah, we got absolutely creamed by this deck. Um, yeah, interesting. I think, uh, I think Delver is in a pretty good spot right now. But again, like, Delver has game into everything because it's just, like, efficient good cards. Then being able to shut down our best lines is really good. That turn where they had three mystery cards in hand and they did have the force was obviously pretty backbreaking for us. Maybe we're supposed to go lower on these things. The problem is we don't really have that much removal to deal with our opponent's stuff. 
Whereas like a regular scam deck tends to have more removals, so we can actually pick off some of these creatures a bit more readily. All right, let's go to round four. Um, I guess we're a reanimated deck today. Let's keep this. We kind of need our Entune to resolve. Unless we get lucky with the Undersea Sewers. But let's see what flavor of deck our opponent is. All right. That is a land that produces mana. We can jam us up a little bit. All right. So we don't really want to fire off this Entomb. And we don't really want to put something in the graveyard because our opponent might be a reanimation deck themselves. So I guess we hold up and see what our opponent does on their next turn. Like if we can't put a creature in the bin, our hand is going to be awkward. That's for sure. Oh, we could fire off this Entomb now when they can't daze us, but if they are a deck that has reanimate in and we do that, we then give our opponent a big scary monster and lose a game. It's just not worth it. All right, let's see what our opponent's up to here. Catch a Triumph. So we're probably looking at some sort of multicolored combo deck. I imagine our opponent is about to cast up the Beanstalk. Scion Draco of some guy. Okay. Arc of Cruelty is pretty good at cleaning this up. Um, we don't get to Daze back here. But I think we're under enough pressure that we have to do this. Alright. That Force of Will is pretty, pretty back breaking. Alright. Um, so we could try and under City Sewers and Spike. Or we could try and ponder into something. I think the correct play here is... I guess we can just ponder next turn. I think that the correct play here is to try and Spike a creature that we want to reanimate. A force of will. Um, I don't think that's what I'm about right now. I can go into the graveyard. Yeah, so if we had an underground sea to begin with, we would have been able to at least try and daze the Scion or daze their counter spell. We're going to get cracked for four here. At least I don't have the ley line thing given all the keywords you can imagine. Alright, so Orcish Bowmasters is a thing that can happen to us right now. Let it be known. Alright. It is not what happened to us. Okay, so we'll take this troll. Is that good enough? We go to 10. We have a 3 turn clock. Our opponent has a 3 turn clock. They get to attack first. Troll isn't good enough. I think we have to shuffle and redraw here. Another ponder. Okay, deck. Uh, in tomb, that is good enough for what we're trying to achieve. So I think we put the land on top. Then the Entomb, then the Grief. And then we do it all next turn with Grief back up. And then we should be able to clean up this Scion. Okay. Even if they play that Leyline thing to give it some extra abilities, we still get to uh, kill their Scion because the Archon targets them. Feels like that's what they were trying to cast by the speed that they were tapping their lands. And the fact that they've had to undo it and tap it again because it's got a weird man across the old Leyline in the Guild Pact. There it is. So you haven't seen this one. Lands you control are every basic type, in addition to other types. Each non land permit you control is all colours. So this is now getting all the abilities from this own card. So this is going to be lifelink, hexproof, whatever. But we should be able to stabilise pretty effectively this turn. So we're going to draw this in tomb. Let's play this. We will grief, pitching, reanimate. Let's see your hand. What secrets does it hold? Try and St. Catherine and Solitude. All right, we'll take the Solitude. Then we will Entomb. And Animate Dead. So Archon of Cruelty, please. Let's Animate Dead this Archon of Cruelty. And we've got a Ponder for our trouble as well. Maybe we can find a Force of Will or something to protect our current position. So we certainly spun this game around a bunch. Uh, any order in Shuffle for me, please. Another Animate Dead. Okay, so we can bring back some Griefs and a Triumph of St. Catherine next turn. That's pretty good. We could have brought back the Triumph this turn, just to have a quicker clock. But that's what... Uh, so yeah, it's still not a two-turn clock. If we bring this back, it's not a two-turn clock. If we get the Scion of Draco, what's Black give you on that one? First Strike. Uh, no, Lifelink. Yeah, so it wouldn't matter if we get anything back there. I think we're right to ponder, look for a little bit of security, but we won the game either way. So our opponent is playing, like, that deck with a bunch of weird stuff in. So what is in it? Is it, a, is it a Rhino's deck? It could be a Rhino's deck, or it could just be, like, straight up Sign of Draco. Hmm, interesting. I guess we're probably interested in some amount of Force of Negation here. 
Uh, Brazen Borrower can be useful here. I don't mind the Dismember either. Oxy Bowmasters could be useful. Hydroblast, very useful. Dress Downs, pretty useful. That is Void Walker is also pretty useful, potentially, depending on what our opponent's listed. I'm not very familiar with all these Sign of Draco decks. Um, so we're going to want to trim on our reanimation package a bit. So I think we're doing something like four animate deads out, and I think we still want to keep three in tunes because we need to kind of go big. Um, I don't know, maybe we want to keep these animate deads in. Way of the Forgotten is pretty useful if they are on Rhinos. Uh, do we want dazes on the play? Possibly not. We just need to stop one or two specific things. Um, maybe we don't need the Dathy Voidwalkers. Like, Dathy Voidwalkers are good if they're rhinos, but we don't know if they are rhinos. I guess they've got some big spells we're going to be more likely to want. Uh, I guess we want the Whale of Forgotten if we're trimming on in tombs anyway. All right, we're going to submit like this and then reappraise the situation if we go to a game three. I play a lot of Legacy, but I haven't really played any of these Scion decks myself yet, so I'm not really that familiar. I know there are a bunch of Rhino ones, but there are people messing with some other stuff as well. So it's hard to know exactly what's in your opponent's deck, because they're not like a hard and fast. Um, okay, so we can uh, we can Island Ponder looking for... Well, it's going to have to be Underground Sea Ponder looking for Darth Void Walker stuff, but I think we keep this. We're going to ship one of these Brainstorms. Way of the Forgotten is another thing we can use to bounce this ley line out when we need to. All right, so our opponent has a ley line in the guild pact. So their mana is going to be perfect this game, which is lovely for them. I think we do need to fetch a, an underground sea here. We're looking to develop our mana for a turn here. A reanimate, a dress down, a wasteland. I like the wasteland, but not enough to keep this. I think we need to shuffle and look for another land. We did not find another land, but we do have another brainstorm, so we can try again next turn. A brainstorm. Yeah, so our opponent is not on a rhino build. Because they can't run brainstorm in a rhino deck. Well, you can, but it's uh, a little bit squiffy to do so. No play from our opponents. Like, we do have to brainstorm here. If our opponent has a bowmasters, we may be fighting over it. Okay, maybe we don't have to brainstorm now. Excellent. We can just deploy a boring old underground sea into Dathy Voidwalker plan. It's not amazing, but it's something. I'm going to see a Leyline Binding here. We are. Do I care enough about this one? Not really. I'd rather counter the threat, I think. Because countering their threat is, is kind of important because they're all going to have Hexproof. Now, we can obviously bounce the Leyline and then... The Leyline of the Guild Pact, I should say, and then dismember something. So we do have some... Okay, so they want to miracle this Triumph of St. Catherine. Counterspelling this is pretty good because it doesn't get its dice trigger then. So I think we're going to fire off this Brainstorm. Uh, as our spell. Right, so they resolve the miracle trigger, put this on the stack, and we try and get rid of this. And this will be gone for good if we can get it into the graveyard now because it won't get his dice trigger. Is this where you want to fight opponent? It is not. Okay. So what are we doing now? Are they getting to the point where they can actually hard cast this on anyway? A wasteland, you say? I don't hate that one. Uh, I think we are looking to brainstorm. We can also use Whale of the Forgotten to mess around with some of those cards later on. Um, I like Entomb... Uh, sorry, I like Reanimate Troll of khazad Doom as a strategy here. This Dismember does not feel like we need to be... I guess the Whale can go... It's more flexible is the thing. But I think the Ponda is going to be of greater use to us. Right, so let's cycle this and play a threat out that's probably going to get eaten by something. Um, I'm going to have to Sewers. That'll help for later on down the line. Uh, we could get our opponent's Triumph of St. Catherine. Is that better than a uh, troll? Interesting. Uh, if they play their own, we kind of want the one that can't be blocked here. So I think that's what we're going for. Now, if they play like a Scion or something, or a Triumph of St. Catherine, a Triumph of St. Catherine would be able to just block our troll or beat it by uh, just having lifelink so we don't win that race. Okay. So, I'm not sure that our troll is going to be able to go all the way. Our opponent's deck has got Leyline Bindings, probably Plows and Solitudes. But, you know, there's a chance. We're also getting more looks at what our opponent's deck contains. It doesn't seem like a Rhino's deck. But Bounce Spells are still pretty good against Leylines. All right. We do not have a Bowmaster in play, which is sad. That would be nice in this situation. 
Pluto Delta from our opponent. A Tropical Island. Another Ponder. So our opponent is looking at all the cards in the world. But they haven't left White Manor open. And they've already played their land drop. So we're unlikely to see our troll die this turn. So that's nice. They chose not to shuffle their library. Okay, they probably just found another Ponder. Uh, this means Merktide Regents are very easy to cast for rather large booties right now. Okay. We get a crack in it. Where were you last turn? Okay, let's look at this. Oh, they do have white mana, sorry, because I've laid on the guild pack to ignore me. Okay, we'll put this into our graveyard. That's not what we're about right now. Let's bash with our troll. And I'd like to cast a ponder. Don't know if our opponent's running bowmasters or not. Okay, double bowmasters. Uh, yeah, I'll sign myself up for some of that. Um, am I trying to play around like a sweeper? So something like Supreme Verdict could be in our opponent's deck. Or Terminus. So maybe we're going to be playing an instant speed bowmasters here. So we can waste down our opponent to take them off of an amount of mana. Because of Leyline and the Guild Pack, they do have all types on their lands. A Scion of Draco. Sure. This is going to be annoying. Annoying confirmed. They can't block our guy, but they will be gaining four life a turn. And this has Vigilance, so it's not like we can swing back with the Bow Boys. A Brainstorm, sure. So we'll be a little bit punished for not casting this in the main phase. But our opponent did just string together a bunch of cantrips last turn. So I was kind of hoping that they would uh, play straight into a Bowmasters. But I guess they've already got something, so they didn't need to Brainstorm. Because they already found their threat. You know, maybe we'd have been better off just playing the Bowmasters ahead. Let's put them to 10. There is a Leyline Binding. They would like to get rid of our Troll of Khazadum. Very rude. A Pondo. So we know there's a Dress Down. Does that help us here is the question. I don't believe it does. Uh, Whale of the Forgotten though. That's an interesting one. That can bounce the Ley Line. And then mess with some stuff. They can just redeploy the Ley Line though. That's kind of not amazing for us if they do that. Like we, yeah, If we bounce the Ley Line... Then what happens? They just redeploy it and then we get nowhere. We kind of need to bounce the ley line and have a removal. So we could keep this and try and dig into something. Or we could just go any order shuffle, which I think is better. And then try and dig into something a bit more meaningful. Like our reanimation plan is going to be good here. Arc of Cruelty and a Grief. Uh, we're going to have to draw through these, aren't we? Is the issue. So I guess we put back an Arc of Cruelty... And Bowmasters. Or are we griefing this turn? Right, we probably want to cast Bowmasters. Which means we're not griefing this turn. Which means we want to grief next turn. Which means we probably put Bowmasters on top. And then the Archon. So we can pitch the this Archon to the grief next turn. Or we could hard cast the grief. What am I talking about? That would be way better. Oh no, that was a mistake. Alright. We're going to be hard casting the grief anyway. But we could have had the Bowmasters down at a little bit deeper as well. So our opponent can't be drawing extra cards. But they don't need to do anything. Because they've got a three turn clock that also holds down the fort and gains them life. So yeah, we're having a little bit of a rough one here. I guess the order we put those cards on top doesn't actually matter that much, does it? If we're using our mana to cast the grief as an evasive threat. Okay, so the graveyards are off. Understood. We do have a Hydro Blast which can clean up any permanent on our opponent's board. But I'm not particularly happy with where things lie right now. I got Force of Will as well. We can't attack here. We're a long way off this Arcan of Cruelty doing anything. Even if we can get our Orc army bigger, their thing does have first strike, so it would have to be a five. And that's just not happening. I'm going to try and glean a little bit more information for our opponent's deck before we can see this one, if we can. But they've only got two attack steps, and they don't really need to play anything with the board as it is, so they might just Leave it as is, but they've shown us they've got a graph digger's cage. So that's some information at least. I think we need our reanimation plan to be able to interact with the level of stuff our opponent's doing. So we know the top card of our library is the Orchard Bowmasters, actually, don't we? So we don't actually have a way out here. Let's just consider. Alright, uh, that felt pretty bad. Um, I don't think this is a matchup where we want a Dante Void Walker necessarily. Uh, I think we do want some dazes here, though. Let's try and squeeze these in. I think Merktide Regent, where our opponent's trying to go on, like, cages and things, is pretty good. So maybe we're trimming 
some stuff like animate dead like the, the reality still seems fine here if we're doing this we're probably just trimming these don't mind having some reality but if we're doing that we don't really need the entombs so we can then bring back animate dead here something along these lines it kind of feels like we need the Archon of Cruelty, though, to get through what our opponent's doing. But in order to play the Archon of Cruelty, we need to play a bunch of Entombs as well. So we need to play probably four of these cards. If we want to play that, we need to stick these four cards in somewhere. Maybe we're not about Force of Negation. That gives us Archon of Cruelty and an Entomb. I think we do need the Bounce Spells. Maybe we don't need the Dress Downs, and we can try and squeeze in these Entombs. Do we want to try and squeeze in a little bit more reanimate? Maybe we can bring in like one or two of these, but what would go? Like, I think we need the bounce thing. These are obviously good. This is obviously good. I don't think I want to be training ponders in this particular matchup. I don't think we get to to do things differently here. I think we just have to go in like this. Like we've got three entombs and an arc of cruelty and four reanimate effects. We could cut the dismember, but dismember is very clean for taking out Triath of St. Catherine. All right, well, this is a no, non stark it's got no mana. Um, like, we can grief our opponent, or we can bow masters our opponent. I think bow masters is better here. So we're probably keeping this, and kind of need to keep Force of Will blue card. So maybe we get rid of the ponder and just do nothing on turn one, and have a grief available for the future. I think that's acceptable. It's not exciting, but... We'll get a surveil land. That's kind of like half a ponder. Like if we find another blue card, we can move some cards around with a brainstorm. If we find a black card, we've got the grief. We've got the bow masters next turn. And we've got some tools here. Our opponent could even be a beanstalk deck as well. It's certainly possible. Like Triumph from St. Catherine, Solitude. Obviously, Sign of Draco triggers it. Force of Will. They've got enough stuff to be playing beanstalk, and they're in the colours to play wherever they want. So maybe that's what they're doing. They chose not to shuffle their library. Boo earns. Let's crack this Polluted Delta, get ourselves the sewer. Have a little bit of a surveil action. Alright, we'll leave this on top. This is a pretty good card in this matchup. Do we want to fire it? Do we want to try and make sure we stick one by griefing first? Or do we just want to play one out right now? I think we just play one out right now. And if they counter, we have another one, and we still have the grief later on. All right, so we're in with the bowmasters. That makes their force effects, sorry, their their draw effects, a lot worse. They didn't force that, which might just mean they've got a creature that they consider is more important to force through, or they don't have a force. All right, nothing there from our opponent. Interesting. All right, let's draw a card. Another land. I don't hate that one. Gets us one step closer to grief. I don't think we're trying to get our opponent with another Bowmasters here uh, for one extra ping. I think what we can do here is if our opponent tries to remove our Bowmasters, we can replace it. So there's never a window for them to brainstorm. Whereas if we cast it, our opponent can then cast a brainstorm in response. A Triumph of St. Catherine, you say? Not a big fan of this one. It's going to be a little bit awkward for us. But we're going to try to answer it. All right, our opponent did not force back. They didn't last time we did this either. Get through a triumph. So now I think I'm happy to play this Bowmasters and just accelerate our clock before our opponent can do some of their gross things that their deck is capable of. We haven't seen any like big sweepers. We've just seen spot removal. So they might not have much. They might only have one or none even because they are trying to play like under-costed sands. We don't have another under-city sewers, so we're not going to crack this. We'd like to find a land and grief our opponents. I think we still hold these in case we draw lands. Like, we've got a reasonable board position here. Could live to regret this, but just playing Grief into Grief is going to be good. They're also evasive threats, so if they do play like a sign of Draco without having the ley line in play, that's going to be pretty good for us. Okay, this is a, uh, a bad spot for our opponent. They're pondering because they have to, but that is going to give us two Bowmaster triggers. He's going to put our opponent to eight, and we're going to have six power in play. All right, Bowmaster's got the job done. So I'm still not 100% sure of all the cards in our opponent's deck. Kind of looked like a. Blue white control deck with you know a load of spot removal and stuff, but then using off color stuff to power out scions and leyline bindings. Interesting. Um, yeah, I am curious to see how these decks develop. 
But we've got another win on the board and we're going to the final round. We are looking for the 3-2 here. Um, this hand is alright. We can grief our opponent and sort of get the ball rolling. Now there is an issue with that if our opponent has their own reanimation stuff. But I think this is worth doing still. We've got the days to hopefully get through this. Alright, so our opponent's got to reanimate and an entomb. Uh, and a force of will. Just a whole bunch of things. I think the thing we take here is the reanimate. And then I think we're probably pondering here. Our opponent doesn't have a wasteland in hand. I think we're just going to get something to see. We're trying to ponder looking for our own reanimation. Okay, we do have our own reanimation. So where are we going to put these cards is the next question. Uh, I think I'd rather conceal this reanimate in case something does happen. So we're probably putting Bowmasters into our hand. So reanimate on top and then the Bowmasters. So we can reanimate our grief if we want to. If our opponent makes the mistake of just entombing, then we can try and reanimate that as we go down the line. Um... Yeah, I think we just play out the wasteland here. Hold up this Bowmasters. Our opponent shouldn't be entombing here. Unless they have drawn the reanimate right now. Our opponent has cut onto that one. Right, there is a polluted delta from our opponent. They're going to brainstorm. I would like to cast this Orcish Bowmasters. So I imagine if they've got a blue card, this is good enough for a force of will right now. Alright, we're just in, aren't we? And we're still with this daze if they've got a follow-up. That's pretty incredible turn of events for us. Like, we knew our opponent didn't have a blue card from what we'd seen, but obviously they've drawn more cards since then. All right, Orcish Bowmasters, do your stuff. Our opponent hasn't cracked their fetch land. Interesting. A brainstorm of my very own. I guess we undersee sewers first. I'll put it into the graveyard here. I would like to cast this reanimate on this grief. Let's just see what our opponent's cooking with. Gets this out of the place. Um, so they have a force of will. What do they pitch? A brainstorm. How important is it to let this result, to get this to work? Because if we, we can waste down their fetch land and then day. I think this is worth doing. So we waste down their fetch land. They crack this in response, then we daze the force of will here. We'll bounce our surveil land to get some more value going. All right, they've got another force of will here. Brazen Borrower. Okay. Uh, pretty wild exchange. So, I kind of get the impression our opponent might have Entomb Reanimate. Which is going to suck for us. If that's what they have. But sometimes your opponent will have all the force of wills. All right, so they might have Troll Reanimate here. So, we only know for sure one card in our opponent's hand because there's been some brainstorms and all sorts. But we're cracking in for five. So it can't be reanimate, right? Because that just puts our opponent very close to dead. Could be animate dead, though. Right, we're swamp cycling again. Under city sewers. All right, so they might be trying to spike a big scary monster. But they have eight life, so they can't really spike anything too spooky. Okay. Let's brainstorm while we know our opponent can't do anything there. Okay, these cards are all bad. Uh, okay, so we'll put this Entomb away, and this Underground s and this Swamp away, I guess. We need to shuffle them both, so we are. I guess we could have put the Undercity Sewers back, and then fetch that to get the extra value. But we can shuffle these up, and then Surveil next turn as well. That would have involved keeping a Swamp in our hand. I don't think we want the Entomb. We could keep the Entomb as like a, a thing we can pitch to a, a Grief, or in case we draw the Reanimate. But that's such a dicey proposition to put a scary monster in your graveyard. You don't want to be the person putting a scary monster in your graveyard. All right, our Rockish Bowmaster is going to ping them. Take them to two. You got an animate dead. You need an animate dead caliber card to survive here. Whale of the Forgotten. Uh, okay. That does buy them a turn. Right in our upkeep, we'll crack this because we don't want that card on top of our library. And because we didn't put our Undercity Sewers away. We're not gonna get the we're not gonna get the surveilled by doing it in our opponent's end step. Okay, our opponent doesn't have mana for an Orcish Bowmasters, so here comes a brainstorm. 
Uh, do not like any of these cards, which is a problem. Uh, they already have trolls, so we could cycle a troll, and that's not the end of the world. So we could probably just put back these two. I don't think... I guess if we're worried about grief, we probably want to keep the the wasteland so we can try and stop grief coming into play. That seems fine. Uh, we'll hit this under city sewers because that's the best land really because it gives them some extra value here and there. We just need to stop them making a creature. So we can cycle the troll in our opponent's end step to shuffle the cards away. And then maybe we can get some more value off the sewers and entomb. All right. This is a bit of a Hail Mary from our opponent because they don't know the top of their library, I don't believe. Well, they definitely won't because they just cast Entomb, right? But this is kind of the situation they're in. All right. They didn't find, like, the Bowmasters or anything like that. So we managed to get the first one. That's pretty good. So we want some Graveyard Hate here. And we do not want, like, our Entombs and all that sort of jazz. Like, we can reanimate our opponent's creatures, that's A-OK. -okay. But we don't want to be the one to put, like, a big scary monster in the graveyard and then just have them go, Hello, we're going to eat it now. Uh, I like Merktide Regents here. I think we probably want to trim on some Animate Dead. Days on the play doesn't feel amazing here. Force of Will doesn't feel great either. But probably have to run it. Uh, Dismember cleanly kills a troll, so I want that one. Do I like Force of Negation over... Dazes. I don't really want to be fighting two for ones in that sort of manner if I can avoid it. So maybe we do still want like a couple of days. And that leaves us one slot. I think just another borrower. Probably fine here. Sure, we'll run something like this. I think you want to be the scam rather than the reanimator player here. Because historically speaking, scam first became really good because it was absolutely slapping around the reanimator decks. And people are like, oh yeah, it's just pushed regular reanimator out of the format and now we're in a situation where the regular reanimator is the sort of rescaminator build be interesting to see how our opponent has approached this matchup as well all right we'll get this so we can get an under city sewers or we can get a underground sea if that's what we want but we have a days available surely our opponent isn't going to be firing off an in in tomb here no they just swamp cycling that's fine I obviously trolls are still big guys. Uh, pretty scary. I'm gonna deploy the Douthy Voidwalker, you say. Would I rather fight with a daze or a force here? So we're gonna get the Undercity Sewers, get a little bit of value for our draw. A reanimate. I will put that on top of my library, please. And then I would like to daze this. Our opponent has a daze as well. Do I care enough about this to force of will, is the question. I think so. Like, I think our opponent is on the fair plan as well. We're going to get griefed here. We are going to get griefed. Okay, so they're going to take our... I don't know what they take here. The reanimate is on top of our library, so... That's pretty good. We have to decide if we want to grief our opponent or troll our opponent. Which of those is going to be better for us. So I think we are getting an underground C here. So we can, like... I guess we can't really bluff anything here. Um, but this sets up, us up better for drawing cantrips and things later on. This isn't really about Wasteland. I know some people even trim Wastelands in this matchup. All right. I would like to reanimate. What would I like to reanimate? An Orcish Bowmasters, a Dante Voidwalker, a Grief or a Troll. Troll is the quickest clock. I think we just take the Troll and try and get out of this game. Just start bashing away. Okay. Bowmasters would have been good in that spot. Maybe our opponent doesn't cast a Brainstorm if they don't it. If we play the Bowmaster, they might have some other plays. Troll is hard to kill. It's basically like Dismember or Bounce Spells. Now, Bounce Spell does put this back into their hand, which is obviously not nothing. But, okay, so they got just the sewers here. I don't really want to cycle this troll if I can avoid it. Because as it stands, we have the big thing in play. And if our opponent has an Animate Dead, they don't take the life. And then that can swing things a little bit. All right, this is an excellent draw. This shuts down the potential if our opponent's kept in some Entomb lines. Now, they can obviously count spell our Daffy Voidwalker. But if they don't, it's pretty good times for us. All right, they didn't have anything. Good. So we've got nine damage in play. And our opponent's graveyard is good for things like Merc High Regent, but they can't add additional cards to their graveyard now. 
And if they cast a spell to get rid of the troll, that will give us a good spell underneath our Voidwalker. They shuffle their library off of the Ponder. Attack the Voidwalker of their very own. So they can go for the trade if they want to here. Let's under City Sewers ourselves and see what we fancy. A Brainstorm. Uh, yes, I would like a Brainstorm. So if we attack with both, they probably trade Voidwalkers here. And that's acceptable to me. It does give them the opportunity to do an Entomb line, but they shouldn't really have that in their deck in the mirror. But maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong in that, but when I've spoken to people who play this deck more than me, they, they tend to suggest that that's not really what you want to do. That's why they've all got these cyborg plans and some people are splashing white and all sorts. Is our is their troll good enough to kill them? Is the question. I've played Underground Sea. Animate dead on is that grief. That doesn't block. They can take one of our trolls if they want. Be my guest. They have reanimate on our orcish bowmasters here. They do. Okay. So now we have a brainstorm on top of our library. Do I want to have a brainstorm on top of my library? Um, well, they have to block with all of their guys. So the answer to that is yes, because we kill all their guys. They don't even trade here. And then we just brainstorm afterwards. And then we are quite far ahead. This is four damage. Yeah, that animate dead was not the best for them. All right, let's brainstorm. What are you going to find us? Dismember, Ponder, Well of the Forgotten. Just a bunch of stuff that is fine. Right, I'll put these on top and we'll pass a turn. The opponent's got one draw step here. The Brazen Borrower is good. All right, they didn't have anything and we finished the league. Well, sorry, we finished that match 2-0 and then we finished the league 3-2. Let's talk about the list. Well, you know, the list is doing an inherently powerful thing, but... I think you'll probably notice that there were a couple of occasions where we, you know, we were exposed to what our deck has weaknesses to, if you know what I mean. So we are a bit weak to some graveyard hate sometimes. If we're in a matchup where, like, our sort of backup plan of, you know, just hard casting Greece and making Bowmasters, if we're in a matchup where that's not actually that good and our opponent can shut off our graveyard, then we're just going to get absolutely clowned on. And that, that did happen. And then we also had the problem of, not really being able to interact with our opponent that much. Like, we've got Force of Wills and we've got Dazers. You know, those are good catch-all stuff. But if our opponent manages to stick something in play, you know, like a Dragon's Race Channeler and it's a 3-3, the only way we're really interacting with it is either Borrower, maybe our little bounce spell, uh, Whale of the Forgotten, or if we can, like, do our combo of putting an Arkham of Cruelty into play. And whilst we did manage to pull that off and beat a Scion with it, we, you know, we couldn't do that against Delver because Delver was just too low to the ground and could sort of spit out the right things at the right time. So, you know, this deck is far from unbeatable. Like, we, we even lost with our Grief Reanimate Grief Hand. Our opponent was just, uh, just... just had the access to the things they needed to sort of get through that. Now, we did make a few little mistakes here and there too. Like, I'm not very familiar with this deck. I think I played it twice before, maybe. Maybe three times, but there have been quite different iterations as the deck's been evolving. Uh, and you need, you know, you need quite a lot of reps, I think, to get this one fully down. But you can clearly see it's powerful. And it's not a surprise that this won the Legacy Showcase Challenge. It is kind of the sort of the bogeyman of the format. Like I said, people are voicing concerns about this deck and wanting Grief Band mainly, uh, which, uh, you know, I don't necessarily disagree with. I could, you know, Grief isn't a particularly enjoyable play pattern, but it probably is reasonable for legacy to be honest but you know it's kind of up there as a thing i think people wanting bowmasters banned is just wrong in my opinion i think bowmasters is a a good staple of the format that punishes blue decks whilst not really punishing non-blue decks so the non-blue decks can run it and it's much better against the blue decks than it is against the non-blue decks so it it kind of adds a little bit of parity to the format so it's not just all blue decks all the time because like the green-white depth deck at the moment is really well positioned. Lands is pretty well positioned. Cradle control is quite well positioned. So I think you've got, you know, a lot of tools in the format to stop decks like this from being too oppressive as well. But I guess you sort of see how it shakes out. Like, each week brings new people innovating and stuff, and maybe people find some answers, maybe people don't, and everyone just ends up playing this. But the format has narrowed recently in terms of 
how many decks make up the greater than 5% of the meta decks. But I, I do track that every month on my Patreon when I do a breakdown of the current meta and how it affects Turbo Depths on my Patreon. If that's the thing that interests you, by all means, take a look. But as for this deck, uh, congratulations to John1111 for winning the Legacy Showcase Challenge. It's uh, you know, one of the toughest tournaments on Magic Online to win. And clearly the deck is a powerful tool and it only gets more powerful when you put the reps in and learn stuff. I'm not... What I will say about this particular... So I'm not 100% convinced on the the Merkside Regent plan. I do quite like the Triumph of St. Catherine plan when you splash. But that does make you more vulnerable to Wastelands. Um, but Source to Plowshare is, kind of covers the main problem that I had with this deck sometimes. Which is its inability to remove creatures can be a bit of an issue. So by having, you know, some white spells you can alleviate that. But that does make your mana base more vulnerable to some other decks so you know it's not a free trade-off which is why legacy is so good you can do all the things you want but it, everything kind of comes with a cost all right with that one i think we are done for today so i hope you enjoyed this one please remember to like and subscribe it really does help the channel i think we're about up to 2700 subs now so thank you so much for everyone who's helped me get there and i hope you're all enjoying playing legacy at the moment and watching people play Legacy, because it is just a great format still. You know, people might complain about some of the things in it, but when you compare it to the other Magic the Gathering that's on offer, you know, Legacy is just the best thing you can do, really. It is really good fun. All right, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths, as well as three tiers of support. A low-cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel, a mid-tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed Turbo Depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.